In this video, we'll be starting to get the robot actually moving for the first time. Rather than just holding it in the air and allowing the wheels to spin, I'll be showing you moving it around the floor and showing you how you can start to edit the scripts and play with how it moves around. So let's get the robot turned on, connect to it with VS Code, and we can start to run some code. Here we are in VS Code, SSH'd into the robot. Today, we're going to be using the 7pwm.py script which is open here. We also have a second copy of this, 7pwm2.py, and that's so that you can edit the second one and not worry about losing changes. So we can take a quick look through this script, and as a reminder, because I'm running Ubuntu on my robot, I need to use the rpi.gpio folder, but you'll find it easier to use the gpio0 folder if you're using Raspbian. So in this script, it does the standard setup using pins for different motors to drive it forwards and backwards. It also uses PWM to decide how fast to run the motors. Instead of running the motor full speed, it uses PWM to run it at about 30% speed. If you want to know more about PWM, check out my video linked at the top and in the description where I describe how PWM works for the Jetbot. The script goes on to set up the GPIO pins and set up the PWM module so that it can send the PWM signal to the motors. Then it goes on to define how to stop the motors, how to drive them forwards and backwards, and how to turn them left and right. If you're interested in what values are set to which pins to make this happen, take a look at the script yourself, and you'll see that it has stop values and duty cycle values where stop is a zero value and duty cycle is the fully on value, whichever that is. In this script, it's at 30%. Then at the end of the script, we have a series of function calls. It sets the robot to move forwards and then sleeps for one second, which means that the robot will move forwards for one second, then turns left and pauses for half a second. And you can work out from this series what the robot will do before stopping the motors and cleaning up the script. Now let's see this running and make sure it works properly. I'm going to change directory into the code directory and run sudo python 7pwm.py. Now we can watch what the robot does when I execute this script. That's not looking great. And there's a good reason for that. The reason is that the weight is distributed evenly across the robot at the moment. Although we put the motor batteries towards the back and the control board, the fact that the battery powering the Raspberry Pi is so big and heavy and lies across the whole robot means that the wheels can't gain any traction. So what we need to do is move the weight towards the back of the robot. And I'm gonna do this with the incredibly advanced method of sellotaping the battery to the back of the robot. With the battery taped at the back of the robot, the weight is now all on the wheels, which should mean the robot can gain traction. Let's run the script again and check it. And there we have it. Our robot is moving for the first time. Now this is the point where you can take a look at the other PWM script. And if you open it up, and I would recommend opening it in split screen so that you can easily compare. You can see that the code is identical, and that's because this PWM2 script is here so that you can edit it. You can change how long it drives forward, maybe drive it forward for five seconds. Then you could turn it left for longer or even skip these steps. Let's drive forwards for three seconds, turn right for two seconds, move backwards for one second, and then move left for three seconds. So we can set any operations that we want for any amount of time we want using this script. Now let's try running this. Three seconds forward, two seconds right, backwards for one second, left for three seconds. And then we have our robot fully functioning using PWM to drive the motors. Let's instead drive the robot forwards for half a second, turn right for two seconds, turn left for two seconds, and then go backwards for half a second. With this script, we should end up roughly where we started.
and we can see the robot roughly ended up where it started. Now you can take this script and edit it however you want, have a play with how the robot moves around, and see how accurately it can end up where it started if you reverse the order of operations. Next video, we'll look at how to get the robot following a line following course using the line sensor that I showed you how to set up in a previous video.